Oh boy! Oh. This is gonna be a controversial one. Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video we are going to talk about beauty boxes because there is a lot of controversy in the beauty box world right now, mostly revolving around BoxyCharm. Now, y'all are good. I gotta give this to you. You guys are good. You guys have been tagging me to make this video and you're so spot on as to what my interests are. Last Thursday I started to make an outline for this video because I, I feel like I can bring hopefully some helpful information in terms of what beauty subscriptions are, how they work, you know, have you ever stopped to ask, wait a minute, how do you pay $25 a month for $150 plus worth of products? There must be more to this story. Let me start off this video with where we are presently and then we'll kind of backtrack a little bit into digging deeper into subscription boxes and then I'll give some final conclusions. Uh, so, oh, first off, quick disclaimer that this video is only my opinions and all statements expressed are allegedly, am I doing this right? I'm not a drama channel. I don't plan on doing a lot of videos in this. This will not be a series or anything. I'm not even subscribed to any beauty boxes right now but also because of a lot of what I'm going to express in this video. So the current controversy is this Fatia Skin Moisturizer that has gone out in BoxyCharm Premium. I could be wrong here because I'm not a BoxyCharm subscriber, but I believe it went out in their Premium box. Uh, what has happened is this product is supposedly worth $100, and that sounds great in terms of, you know, the price you pay to get the BoxyCharm and it also brings up the value of your box. However, there have been some sleuths on the internet who have dug deeper and are claiming that this is the same product that you can get on Alibaba for $1.40. Your girl read through the entire terms and conditions of BoxyCharm this morning, and because of that, I'm not going to include any pictures off of their website or from their products, uh, but I will go ahead and put up the image of the Alibaba product, and you guys can dig deeper if you want to see if that truly compares to the one that has gone out in BoxyCharm. Now, Obviously, a lot of the controversy here is, well, if this product is supposedly worth $100, but anybody can buy it for two-ish dollars on Alibaba, quantity matters, that's why the price would go up, but two-ish dollars off Alibaba, then is it morally questionable for BoxyCharm to be saying that this is $100? And then there have been some concerns that I do think have been a little bit too far. You know, there's all, it's always this, this important act of balancing when we're talking about any kind of controversy, you can go really, really far down the controversial road and end up, you know, scaring yourself out of any product that's made in China, and I think that's a little too far, scaring yourself out of ingredients like glycerin, which is one of the most safe and tested ingredients to use in a beauty product, period. Um, and then, you know, the, the side, the business perspective, the no, this is really worth $100. I, I think there's a lot to address in this video, but I'm gonna do my best to take a balanced approach. But in order to do that, we really have to dissect beauty boxes. That is where we have to start. We have to start with this question of how do you get hundreds of dollars worth of products in a beauty box for an absolute fraction of the price. So in order to do that, we have to go back to the original beauty subscription, which would be Ipsy, popularized by Michelle Fan, who is coincidentally also in trouble right now. Woo goes so deep, y'all. And because Ipsy is based off a model involving samples, we actually have to go even deeper and get to the very bottom line of what are samples and why did we ever start using samples in the beauty world. So the idea of beauty samples goes all the way back to Estee Lauder, who really did revolutionize the beauty industry, regardless of how you feel about Estee Lauder today. Uh, her idea was to create the gift with purchase model, which was a way of putting additional products into the customer's hands. The customers would try the product, they would fall in love with it, and they would come back to you to buy more products, at which time you would give out more samples, which would perpetuate this cycle so that people were constantly trying new products from you and buying new products from you. Samples have continued ever since, such that in general, when a company comes out with a product, they actually allocate a certain percentage of that product 
to samples, whether it is foil samples, whether it is the larger deluxe samples, all of that is factored into the cost of manufacturing that item and you consider that portion to be part of your marketing advertising. These samples, many of which are stamped not for sale on the back, are then distributed free of cost by the company who has made the product. They're distributed to Macy's, to Sephora, to Ulta, and that is how you end up getting free products. Again, remember they're marked not for sale because the companies gave them for free to Sephora and Ulta. However, Sephora and Ulta can set rules and guidelines on how you get those, be it the $50 purchase that you must make at Ulta to qualify for a beauty break, or be it the $25 that you spend at Sephora to get one of those samples. Along came Ipsy with a completely new and revolutionary model. Their idea was to have these products placed into the hand of customers every single month, delivered to their mailbox, five samples, in which at the original time you paid, when, when Ipsy first came out, you paid $10 a month to cover the cost of shipping and the curation of the box. Now I believe it is up to $12. For years, I've been trying to tell people that Ipsy doesn't buy these products. That is again why you often see on the back of them, not for sale. That is not directed to you, that is directed to Ipsy. They are not allowed to sell you those products. However, they can sell you a curated box. Your $12 a month is paying for, again, curation of the products and shipping. You gotta be sitting there asking the real questions. Now, Ipsy reported a $500 million profit in 2015. And at some point, you gotta ask, how did they do that selling $10 a month beauty bags? I think the question that a lot of people have been missing here is that a lot of people see Ipsy as the service that they're paying for, where they're paying for samples, but in reality, Ipsy has always sold itself to brands as advertising. Ipsy has always told businesses, hey, you got a product, you give it to us, we will talk about it, we could do additional bonuses, and I've always suspected that uh, the giveaways through Ipsy and all that kind of stuff has some amount of money changing hands, although allegedly, I can't prove it, but again, $500 million profit in one year, you gotta ask these questions. To give you guys some perspective, if you're still not believing me, here's another offshoot of Ipsy Influencer. So I looked up Influencer's net worth, and by the way, you guys do not have to take my word for any of this, you can look this stuff up yourself, it is all public information. Influencer in 2017 was worth $18 million. And what does Influencer do? Influencer sends you products completely free. Completely free. But don't get too caught up on thinking that Influencer exists only for you. Influencer is making money through businesses the same way as Ipsy and BoxyCharm. All right, so let's move on to BoxyCharm. So Yosef Martin, who you may have heard of as the founder of BoxyCharm, originally started out running liquidation businesses, which he ran out of Miami, Florida, which is a fantastic hub for international business, and I do believe a big part of why he chose that location. Now, his model with BoxyCharm was a bit different than Ipsy. He did see the success of Ipsy Birchbox, these subscription boxes at the time, but he thought, what if instead of giving away samples, we provide customers with full sizes and we actually pay the cost of goods to the companies. Well, that sounds great, but what is cost of goods? We gotta really examine this question. Now, I've made a series a long time ago talking about the true cost of makeup in which I really broke down how makeup has a markup of 80 to 90% plus, plus. So bearing in mind what we know at this point, BoxyCharm could pay 10% of the cost on products, they could claim a $150 value on a box that cost them a mere $15. Now they are paying to ship it out and all companies that exist have some kind of a shipping contract where they get reduced shipping prices. So let's just say maybe they only cost them $4 to ship instead of the seven to $8 that you and I would pay. So now it only costs them $19 to ship these boxes. They were originally charging $21 for a box, so they're making a $2 profit. Great, 
But that's not really a good business model unless you are a charity. And as far as I know, none of these beauty subscriptions are 5013Cs. So you have to start asking what could BoxyCharm do to cut the cost that they pay in their cost of goods to these brands further, make it more like mm, 98 to 99% of the cost. And to understand this, we have two different uh, diverging roads down which we could go. One being to really capitalize on the advertising marketing aspect and the other to be the private label route. Advertising marketing. Again, this is what all of these boxes supposedly exist for. All of these boxes advertise to these companies, hey, this is a good way to get your name out there. This is a good way to sell your products. Now, remember that Joseph Martin is good at the liquidation industry, and the liquidation industry is very different from the retail industry. You have to understand how a product cycle works to make money for a brand before you can understand this. And let's make this example Anastasia Beverly Hills because I think a lot of people noticed how many palettes Anastasia released last year and a lot of people were overwhelmed and commented on it, but Anastasia made a good profit. So let's start with the Alyssa Edwards palette, which released around March, April. Apologies if my dates aren't perfect here. Uh, so they came out with this palette. Now it cost them some amount of money to create the palette, to work with Alyssa Edwards, to manufacture it, and to advertise it. Let's assume it cost Anastasia Beverly Hills 20% of the cost to make this palette. They manufacture it, they ship it out in PR, all these influencers use it, and you and I all buy it at retail price. It does not take long for Anastasia Beverly Hills to have gone from being in the hole in terms of paying for this palette to breaking even on the cost to making a profit. Once they have made a profit off the entire Alyssa Edwards palette, they can move on to the Jackie Ina palette. Repeat this cycle, move on to Carly Bible, and on and on till you hit a point where it really doesn't matter if people are buying the Alyssa Edwards palette or not because Anastasia has already made their profit. So now we're talking about slightly older products and what is it that you get? In BoxyCharm from especially these well-known brands, you tend to get slightly older products. Example here being all of those Tarte palettes that went out. Of course, I didn't see any contracts, so I can't really prove this. It is only a suspicion slash hypothesis, but it would make sense to me for Tarte to say, you know what, we have an excess of all of these old Rainforest of the Sea palettes. Let's just go ahead and sell them for less than it cost us because to produce them because we've already made our money off of it. And by putting them in BoxyCharm, we are putting good quality palettes in the hands of everybody who subscribes to BoxyCharm so that now they know, hey, you know what? I got a Tarte palette a while back from BoxyCharm. It was good quality. I think I'm going to buy more at retail. And that is the subscription box model. That's the whole point of it for brands is to get exposure, get your name out there, get people talking about your products, get them posting all over Instagram, get them all over YouTube using your products. Yeah, good, okay, what about that other path, that private labeling? Now, this is so fascinating to me that we're talking about this today because this isn't anything new. Uh, not so evil stepmother put up a video that I saw last week in which she had a lot of concerns about storybook cosmetics in particular, and I'm just gonna link you her video if you haven't seen it. Uh, you know, she did get some amount of criticism for that video, and I'm really not sure why, because in my opinion, she brought the receipts as you kiddos say, and the receipts were as long as a CVS receipt. And adding to that, if you don't understand what private labeling is, I'm going to link you to Stephanie Nichols, Good old Morphe video. Ooh, that's an old video, but you know what? That video, that video holds such a special place in my heart because that was where I really started asking these bigger questions. Oh my gosh, there's so much to address in today's video. So building off of Not So Evil Stepmother's video, some of the things that she addresses in that video include the storybook cosmetic situation, the fact that their palettes are made in the US when you purchase from them, and yet the palettes that went out in BoxyCharm are made in China. Uh, so that's not the only example of that, 
But here's why this could potentially make sense. And I'm going to talk about my example that I have done a lot of research on, and that is 111 Skin and Ipsy. So last year, when I did that video talking about luxury versus drugstore, I ended up kind of going into this rabbit hole of the 111 Skin sample that was sent out in Ipsy and how it did not match up in terms of ingredients nor the site at which it was manufactured to the product that 111 Skin sells. And what was interesting to me is that the beauty box community had already addressed this. They had already gone over all this, so it wasn't anything new for me to have figured it out on my own. Uh, so again, the reason this could potentially make sense is from that advertising and marketing perspective. You know, 111 Skin, interesting brand. Their whole brand is built off of the idea that their founder is a plastic surgeon. And I, I again, my you know suspicions here, I feel like they thought that that would be enough for them to enter the luxury market, but it proved more difficult than it seemed. So they said, okay, well, let's send out some products that are not the same through Ipsy, but it'll get our name out there. If you keep in mind that that's the end goal, then hypothetically, it doesn't matter if the products that you send out through boxes are not the same quality, not manufactured at the same site, because that end goal is still the same. People are talking about your products and hey, you know, if you subscribe to the model of no publicity is bad publicity, then great, you are getting a lot of exposure now. And one more thing before I move on from talking about Not So Evil Stepmother's video. So she made a lot of really good points, but there is one tiny little point that I slightly disagree with her on, and that is only because I've had my own experiences with it. And that was, she was addressing how when some of these products were being resold by people who received them in their boxes on Poshmark or Mercari, the companies were apparently claiming that these listings were counterfeit and having them removed. In my personal opinion, this does not validate these products being counterfeit. Instead, I suspect that brands are using that as a loophole in order to get products removed. And you have to keep in mind why these brands might do this. So assuming that these brands are putting their products in BoxyCharm and Ipsy so that they can increase their advertising, you know, have people come to them to buy more products after they enjoyed it in BoxyCharm and Ipsy, then if people are selling those same products at less than the company is, they might want to have that competition removed. It's a loophole that exists in the same way as the copyright situation here on YouTube. And if you're real enmeshed in this community, then you already know that the fancy face can tell you more about this. And I do have experience with this happening to me with a Fenty product. So a while ago, I had bought a limited edition Fenty collection that I reviewed on this channel. I gave it a fairly neutral review and I actually thought about returning the products to Sephora. But then I also thought, well, you know what? I don't really care if I you know, lose money on these. Why don't I see if anybody on Facebook wants them? So I put them up on Facebook Marketplace for a discount and immediately my listing was removed because Facebook said it was counterfeit, even though I bought the product at Sephora. If that was counterfeit from Sephora, we got a real problem. But I think it was just a, a mass attempt of Fenty to reduce the actual counterfeit products that were all over Facebook. And yes, mine was authentic, but it didn't matter. It was just kind of a, a sweeping of the rug. So now that we are finally caught up, we can talk about this fascia skin situation that has been really exploding in the beauty box communities. Now, the alleged claims are that this is a product that Fascia Skin claims to sell for $100 per moisturizer, but people have found a very, very close resembling product on Alibaba for as low as $1.40. People have also found evidence that this company, Fascia Skin, did import from this Alibaba company a giant box of moisturizer. And the end result is three main questions. One, is this product counterfeit? Two, is this product safe? And three, is this ethical of BoxyCharm? Is it counterfeit? I'm gonna have to say no, because private labeling has been going on for a very long time. In addition to that, you cannot counterfeit your own product. You know, uh, the Colored Rain lipsticks that were made in China, they're not counterfeit if they're still made 
by colored rain. Are they the same? I mean, probably not. But if we're really asking this question, then we have to extend this all the way to holiday sets. We have to dig up that old controversy of Too Faced and the Nikki Tutorials palette that was supposedly of poor quality or any holiday set in general. Tarte does this every year. For example, their blush books are made in China, whereas their blushes are made in the US. But as long as they're both made by Tarte, we can't really talk about counterfeit. We can talk plenty about quality, and that is a very fair conversation, in my opinion. But no, on a technicality, at the end of the day, we can't call this product counterfeit. So is it safe? This is another one of these really, really difficult questions because a lot of products are made in China and I think it is dangerous to go too far down the rabbit hole of China equals bad. If you're gonna make that argument, you actually have to address giant designer brands that produce products in China. Uh, so, you know, I think that, I absolutely think, and I've said this so many times in videos, I think we need so much more regulation on the cosmetics industry as a whole, but as long as we don't have it, it is very, very difficult for any of us to talk about safety. Again, in my own personal opinion, I would say your best bet is to go with companies that you really trust, especially with skincare products, where you are using products that are made not just to sit on the top of your face and act as makeup, but products that are meant to absorb into your skin. Bottom line here being, I personally would not use this product, but I can't really answer the question of is it safe? And question number three, is it morally wrong of BoxyCharm and or Fascia Skin to include this product in BoxyCharm? I'm ultimately not going to answer this question. I'm going to leave it to you to make a judgment call here, but I'm hoping that after you've watched this video, you are a more informed consumer. You know, on the one hand, the question that I'm seeing a lot of is, wait a minute, but this product only costs $1.40. $100, that's not fair. There's a lot of things that aren't fair in life, and I have a hefty suspicion that this is not the only time we are seeing this type, this 99% markup on a beauty product. It probably goes on all the time, but I think Fascia Skin's mistake here, and again, of course, this is only my opinion, I think they did a terrible job of repackaging this product. How many of you guys have been in the beauty community long enough to remember back when Doe Deer uh, repackaged the pigments from TKB Trading Company? I, I wasn't, I don't, I don't remember this, but I've since read up about it. So yeah, this stuff has been going on for a long time, but this level of not even changing the packaging, yeah, I, you don't see that every day. And again, like I said at the beginning of this video, I did read the terms and conditions of BoxyCharm, and basically they don't hold liability for the products that are included in their boxes. It's something that you accept if you do so much as visit the website, which I now have done, which means I feel I can't hold them liable. My bottom line for this whole video is for you to be a much more informed consumer, for you to understand what's going on behind the scenes a lot more so that you can, you know, make these decisions about what you subscribe to or what you choose to use with more knowledge. So that is all I have for today's video. I feel like it really was a lot, but again, I'm really hoping that the bottom line for this whole video is not that different from the video I put up on Friday. It is, you know, for you to ask these bigger questions more, for you to hold these companies to higher standards because re that's really all we can do. And of course, if any of you guys want to contribute additional feedback and or critiques of my thoughts here, please feel free. My comment section is always open. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.